Ready? One, two, three. So when you roll back into town, they'll all be around just to show you that your friends like mine will never let you down. So when you roll back in the town, in the town, they'll all be around just to show you that your friends like mine will never let you down until you hit the ground. Hi there, welcome to episode 38 of Nerf News from the Owl Ranch. I am your host, your anchor man, Chris Cartea, and I am going to tell you some Nerf news. And this month we have an asshole of the month. Now, of course, just like any old asshole of the month, it takes more than one asshole to do it. And this month is no exception. No exception. And it's a really good reason why this is the asshole of the month. Not just because he's doing something cliche in the hobby. Not just because we don't agree with it. Not because we don't like it. Yes, it's legal. You can do what you want. It's, you know, it's under, it's over 36, 80, 34 inches long or whatever the hell the rifle's got to be. But you know what? Grow up. Uh, truth. Say Man. Man. This is going to be so much fun. Not only do I say poor retaliator, and I say poor Ruger 22, I also say poor fluted barrel, and I say poor community. So this guy got asshole of the month. Well, I shouldn't just say this guy got asshole of the month. I would say uh, it took a lot more than just this guy, because everything he did was perfectly legal within the law. It, you know, being over 34 overall length, the barrel being longer than 18 inches, everything else. And it's just a 22. It's not an M16. It's not a 1919 Browning. I get you. But you guys ever wonder why we lost the Brady Bill? I can tell you why we lost the Brady Bill. It's because attitude. We just have this attitude, you know? And this attitude is making us lose it. I mean... Is making us lose our rights. It's one reason I like Nerf and not as much the shooting community anymore and not really the airsoft community because you get this attitude. It's like, oh, you know, Drac puts up a really good comment about, hey, man, you know, it's clever, but some of the guys that, with the super soakers, they felt the same way. And, you know, I'm a, I am a, a guy who modifies toys myself. I do this for a living. Uh, I'm a fellow firearm enthusiast. This is irresponsible clickbait, and it's dangerous to our hobby and irresponsible to your audience. And he puts up a really good argument. It gets 1,100 likes, and then you got all these people. Uh, and he says, I, you, know, you don't have to take down the video. I understand. You worked hard on this video. But really, you know, and all these people, like, you're playing with toys. Um... You know, Coop 772 is better. Grow up. Yo, click back and go back to your little safe place and let the men have fun. You know, it's irresponsibility like that. And I was at a gun store the day, the one of the days the Brady Bill was in the, the Senate hearing committee. And my parents were getting um, pepper spray licenses, okay? You needed a license in California to have pepper spray. And they had this little target and this whole thing and everything. And I saw on the TV while I was waiting there this whole hearing and how ridiculous it was. And people were like, well, you can just go in a store and buy a gun. And go, well, no, you need a class two license for that. And America doesn't give that out so liberally, okay? Um you know, all these things. Okay, well, if they are ridiculous, and they are, okay, the people who argued, you know, for the Brady Bill, some of them were pretty dang ridiculous. I came home going, like, our future is screwed. And I was right, actually. Our future is screwed. And don't do not do the same thing. You know, you really want to be a, the better in the community, put up a good argument. Hey, Drac, look, this is perfectly legal. Um, this is within this, okay? It may be irresponsible to do this, and it may bring stigma on the hobby. Uh, we'll try to be more considerate next time, or whatever. I mean, I don't see the point of taking some flimsy ABS shell and putting gun metal parts and putting it... I don't see the point. And this long barrel hanging out of there, unless, like, you're, like, a cop with Mr. Magoo eyes or something, not going to confuse that for a gun. I mean, for a Nerf gun. You're not going to do that, okay? But, but... You know, it, it's like, there's so many arguments that you could put up here. And what I see is just a bunch of trash. 
you know. In our community, we all do that. We argue logically. In the Nerf community, we argue logically. We will defend stuff logically. If someone says, oh, I can't do it, go prove it. We'll put up a video. We'll do it. We'll show up to it. If that's not good enough, we'll go to a meet and show people it will do it, you know. And we're like brothers in arms, and we're cool, and that's a good attitude to have. And in my opinion, when the Constitution was signed, I, they were brothers in arms. We were in a militia. We had a bad guy to fight, and they were the Redcoats, and they were the French, and we were brothers in arms, and we treated each other with respect, okay? Um, I don't see that here. And this got me thinking, is this, is this why we're losing our Second Amendment? Is this why? And I thought back to that one time when I was 18 and the Brady Bill was getting passed. And yeah, I think this is a big part of it. You know, when, um, you know, the NRA wants to concede to something, you know, and, and they're like, okay, fine. You know, the, the, you know the, the, the United States has this attitude about it. But then again, when the United States wanted to concede to something and say, yeah, but we need this, the NRA would go, oh, no, 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 we can't, we can't do that. I mean, they would totally, just totally fight, you know what I'm saying? And not be considerate of anything, not give an inch. Well, unfortunately, the NRA didn't give an inch, but our government took it anyway. And you're not going to win this fight with vinegar, okay? You have to win this with honey, and honey nourishes Okay, and honey is logic here. Okay, so this is why this one asshole of the month. Not necessarily uh, Tactical Toolbox, but much more, I think has some pretty good videos actually. But actually the community. Is this what our shooting communities turned into? When I lived in Utah and I was in the shooting community, it, people weren't like this. I mean, we thought our politicians were BS. I mean, I thought Bill Clinton was BS. I thought this guy couldn't fight a war. I mean, if Russia took over tomorrow, we'd be screwed. And I also felt our gun laws were being the same way, you know, as like, and it was going downhill when I was in college, you know, and I was at BYU. Um, but no, we we're brothers in arms. So I'm saying go back to that brothers in arms kind of attitude. It will get you a lot farther, shooting community. Seriously. And if you guys ever want to go to a Nerf War and play, hook, look me up. You can, you can, you can hit me up on Facebook, Chris Cartea. You know, I'm the guy has, he has a big Nerf gun in his, you know, cover photo. You can hit me up. You can talk to me and say, hey man, uh, we'd like to play a war. See what's what? Cause we can play these in parks. We can play these anywhere because they're soft Nerf darts. They're not like airsoft. They're not like paintball. It's like paintball, but needs three times less the force to go just as far. And it is a challenge to shoot Nerf. I find a lot of shooting enthusiasts, people really love this sport. And if you guys think that Nerf is wussy, well, guess what? I thought so too. Why do you think I became a modder and wanted to change that? That's right. So Trip Miller posting all his Sledgefire theories on Nerf modders welcome. This is really interesting because a lot of people... Um, like the such fire it's it's large diameter it's big uh i gave it <laughs> I, I i i told him that um <laughs> the cc's to the sledge fire 73 cc's compared to uh 72 with the chronos he's asked me a lot of stuff and i've helped him out and yeah there's a lot of a lot of theories a lot of stuff and he finally decided just to pull everybody together and and talk about the sledge fire and as you can see lots of mobs here you know, we got metal parts, you got all sorts of things, yeah. Well, okay, why have I never modded a sledge fire, for example? Well, okay, first off, um, it really does require, like, metal parts. And I won't just think metal here, I think metal here, too, and this metal rod here. Look how much bend you have, it's just crazy. Uh, it is a self-contained shell, which is nice, like a, kind of like a, um, a hammer shot. Has its own self-contained shell on the inside. But, you know, it, I really think this is going to take a lot of work. Um, me, I've never done it because, well, I got what I want out of the Bird of Prey. To be honest, I got what I want. But some people like it because it's break barrel. And so so it, it's not something that people should give up on, necessarily. It is really cool. But, yeah. it's You know, he, so he's got this on, on Nerds Monster. Welcome if you want to check this out him getting together and he's taken a lot of my advice and um you know he's done a lot with it lion rasputin has made one too like uh 
black and copper one, which looks pretty cool. And there's a lot of people that are making sledge fires and trying to make them and trying to make a run at them, you know. Uh, another one of those blasters they only made once and then they didn't do them again. But this was a lot more popular than the bird. Personally, uh, the things you got to compensate for with a sledge fire. And let me tell you my opinion on what they are. Okay, number one, you have an angled, um, you have an angled prime. Okay, you have an angled prime, and of course, this is cool for um, because this holds here, this holds here, this pulls back and knocks it back. But I really think you need something that's a little bit more like this, goes straight back, that prime straight back, and then it locks back like in a rifle stock or something. That would be cool. But the fact that it's it has to go like this to put this in to go like this, yeah, it's not a direct straight. I also think this rod has to be a lot more solid. And if you're gonna make the rod solid, you have to make the catch solid. Basically, I think this is gonna take metal internals to do it. Um, but do I think it'd be worth it? Yeah, I think so, I think so. But personally, I don't because, well, this this does it, man. This is uh, bird, bird of Prey type, uh, type LT. This does what I want. It gives me the power, the speed, the accuracy, everything. So that's kind of why I've been out of this fight. It's kind of like, well, you know, it's redundant to have a platform that you have working, try to make another one, and try to make it have the same results as this one if you don't know it's going to be better. Or even, you know, we have to completely reinvent how you do it because, well, I already have something that works. I already have something that works for wars, basically. But I'd like to help out with this the best I could. The other thing is um, the spring rest. I'm pretty sure you could put a bigger spring there. Um, that looks like that's a that's a seven eight spring. I'm pretty sure if you were to route this out, you can probably put a long shot spring in there. And in my opinion, long shot spring would probably be better. And then put a spring guide here that would go up there, or widen the spring guide up there. Yeah, that would probably be better. But um, it's really interesting that he, he put all this up and showed everything off and showed basically what's going with and decided to go to the community with it and just show, yeah, what I'm on. Oh, also, metal. Look what I did with the Ultra Mesh Fire Strike with the, with the one metal retainer. Yeah, metal retainer what, being the spring holder, the spring separator, that would help you a lot too. So I just wanted to put in my two cents worth what I would do with this. Um, good luck, Trip. Uh, if you want to message me, uh, give me a call. Um, just message me. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's what. Good luck with this as usual. And I, like you see, this is pivoting. That's plastic. That's not. Yeah, it's gonna wear it away. You really need this to be metal. Just yeah. I know it's gonna be expensive, but I think any grade in Denver is really. Look at marriage. Dr. N7 has a full playlist of the of the Worker Hurricane mod guide and review. Three videos so far. He's got his videos on the Worker Hurricane, his science, everything else. I think this should be like the LiPo um, collection that um, Corey Riven had, where he had like basically all the good uh, LiPo videos he learned from. You really should just put all the good hurricanes you here. Now, I don't like the hurricane. I'm not against it. I don't think it's the spawn of Satan or anything crazy like that. But, you know, I do like the idea of people putting up whole, like, pages like this. Like, Corey Riven did one on Lipos on his on his channel. Corey, a.k.a. Riven. Okay? And then you got Spectre and 7 He's got his on the Worker Hurricane. That's cool. If you can put every one of those up... That'd be really cool. Also, Walcom S7, he put up a review about the about the Worker Hurricane. He got one. He actually got one free. Let's see what he's got to say about it. Yeah, you, know, you either love this blaster or you hate it. But I do, but I do know this. Okay, the people that seem to hate it are people that don't have it, or people that aren't that into flywheel, or people that are a little bit more aesthetically inclined. But Walcom, my man Walcom, put up another really good video, a really concise video, an honest video about the Worker Hurricane that he got sent from by Worker. And it's a showstopper.
Oh, I know how that feels. I know how that feels. Especially doing Owl Ranch. Do you know how much the asshole of the week one took? Oh, God. Seven takes. Seven. And I had to erase them. Right. Look at this. Yeah, I got something to drink. Oh, yes, the bourbon of the week is Maker's Mark. So after seeing this video, I will tell you, revise what I think of it, okay? One, I think it's cool that um, it's something out of the box, it's small, I still think it looks like a Star Wars reject phaser, I think it could look cool, but honestly, the people that are going to buy this are not people that are going to care as much about aesthetics, just like us day and age, they don't really care about size anymore uh, than they do about performance. But me personally, I think performance also has to do with size. Since when is size not performance? Ask a lady, she'll tell you. But anyway, yeah. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, you have to uh, desolder it and put a lipo connector on there. I kind of think that sucks too. But you know what? For with a lipo, 100 feet per second, cool. You know, um, it's, a, it's a twist spring loaded thing. He says that the, the, the magazines aren't that cumbersome and that you can probably store a bunch of them on you. But let's put it this way. I mean, five shots is just like... Oh, six, excuse me. Quick, just real quick, you know? I, I think that just leaves much to be desired in, in a backup situation. And the fact that you do have to have the pregnant eggs, although they are available, that's nice. Um, you, you, no, nothing you can use in anything else in your setup. I think that's a little, eh, that's a little sketch. I just, I think so. And, you know, I do think they could have done a better job. I'm really thinking about having a worker hurricane, uh, contest. Yes. A contest of who can make the best looking worker hurricane and submit it and put in a really small prize, like a, panther or something like that and uh yeah and i mean don't spend a bunch of money don't do mods that you aren't going to do already the whole thing is, is that you're, you're not trying to you know plate it in gold to win some panther or something but i may announce that next week a worker hurricane make it not ugly contest by chris cartea you heard it here first yes Okay, Nick Rookie came across this on uh, an eBay store uh, for his Nerf Hera. Look at this. It's just a self-contained thing where you can put lipos in, but it has your voltage regulator, alarms, current regulator, everything, so that you can plug one of these in to stock motors and not burn it. That's pretty cool because, you know, normally you have to go, okay, I can go with the stock battery or I can throw lipos in there, trust fires, uh, that's sketch. Or you can throw IMRs in there, well, that's also kind of sketch. Why not have the performance of a lipo but the usability of normal batteries? Well, that's what this tray does here. I don't know who makes it, but I really would like to know because this is really cool. I have a lot of really cool blasters that I have never even like opened out of the box. Get this, Black Friday special from 2015. I still have it. A Strife, new in box. Next to new in box is another Strife. See? <laughs> it, it, the only difference is it, it only got used once. It got uh, batteries for our birthday party. I put in some double A's and started shooting it around because it was a little kid's war. And then I put it in the box. I never used it again. So I got like, you know, I got I got these. It, it, gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. It gets a lot worse. Okay. You can see I got a nemesis up there doing nothing. I got a hail fire there doing nothing. And I've got way back there, I've got a regulator, new in box. Modulus regulator. You see that box right back there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have quite a few good flyboat blessings. I oh oh let, let's not forget. I got a rhino. Yep. It's just decoration. I got it in a trade once and never used it anything. I, you know, I got lots of really good ones. I want to use this for a two-gun rig one day. Just boom, 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 boom. You know? 
I think this would be really rad. But yeah, you can see when I buy stuff, I buy two of everything because I'm probably going to twin gun it. Yeah. And uh, for stuff like that, where I don't really want to go balls to walls, brushless motor, metal cage, everything else. If you made something like this for Strife, that would be kick ass because I have a lot of elite stuff. And I, I, I don't care if it only does 80, 90, 100 feet. That's fine. I just really would like to have a battery package where I can make the best use out of this flywheel stuff, you know? I, I really don't need brushless. I don't need, uh, you know, a 42 and a half millimeter cages, anything like that. I just would really like to see this. So if you guys can drop me some linkage on what's the best to get this with, because it's not just finding this guy. I want to find other people that do it too. Let me know, honestly, because I think this is just, this is rad. Michael Glenn put up a, uh, a new um, YouTube channel called The Human Network. Uh, as you know, he lost his friend Chris Silvers uh, this month. And in his video, Welcome to The Human Network, he wants to do live chats um, every day or every other day. I say do one every week, okay? And every week or like twice a week or something. And it's a help group because a help group for people with emotional problems People are sad in the community, that sort of thing. But also male support groups. There's lots of, fe like he says in the video, there's lots of female support groups. But when it comes to male support groups, it's a little hard to find. And people with drug problems, alcohol problems, that sort of thing. Well, I mean, I got a glass of bourbon in my hand. Yeah. And he talks a lot about his life, you know, drugs and alcohol and, and kind of where he's, he's at. And it would be a really good support group. I hope he gets us off the ground. Um, I had to go out today and get groceries, and I didn't, he was going to put a live chat up, but he didn't put it, but I would like to see this get momentum. <clears throat> so, if you guys, and I know there's a lot of people, I have people on Sam Pan and Nerf, um, Nerf Society, as a matter of fact, Michael Glenn, if you want to admit that, I'll let you admit uh, Sam Panda, because, you know, that's a good group. I mean, I got a lot of people there. I got lots of friends, you know, have depression. XDNL vets, people have drug problems, people have mad depression like me, okay? Um, you know, he's got 20 subs. I would like to see that go to 100 by beginning of next week. And honestly, I would like to see him uh, do a live chat, and I would like to see him do it, and I would like to see uh, support for this because there are a lot of people that are just bottled up and... Seriously, and I think what he's doing is a really good thing, but he needs the momentum. So here we are in the Owl Ranch. I'm telling you, here it is. I am an alcoholic. I am an act depressive. I deal with my problems. I deal with my life. I do what I do. But it would be good to have a good support group. It would, especially a nurse support group. One we can all relate to each other. We all know each other. We all like each other. Okay, and um, we can all we can all work together and cope together and be friends. And I really would like you to check this out. Um, really put as much encouragement on this as, as possible because I really think this is a really good idea that Michael Glenn is doing. Michael Glenn, who's um, uh, NERM from Novacon, uh, big in the NERF community, nice guy. I've chatted with him a few times. He's really cool. Okay, I would really like to see this take flight. So let's see. Um... Toy Fair is just around the corner. I put up a lot of speculative videos about Toy Fair. And I put up a lot of speculative videos about stuff. So let me do a few retractions or suggestions off of what I of what I said. Okay, first off, Jupiter. I really think it is like the Reaper. They're calling it a thousand. Maybe it's ten rounds, maybe it's more expanded, but I think it's eight, because I think it's probably the same. It just comes with ten rounds. I think the Percy's is a top open uh, hopper. I still think that. I haven't gone back on the Percy's. I think that's so. I think that uh, as much as wishful thinking, I want the Megalodon to be removable like the Turbo Vance. I don't think it is. I think it's one of those things that they make it separate and they put it in. Uh, you know, they figure if, you know, if Zuru can get away with it, they can get away with it too. I'm just like, uh, you know. Um, I, if, it, uh, honestly, I hate it when, like, you have the drum, it's separate, and then you have that, and they put this cheesy cardboard, uh, that confused me. Remember the video I was talking about how that, yeah, that second magazine is actually a cardboard cutout. Yeah, so, just, uh, update on that, too, okay? And, uh, 
you know, I just, I just, um, that's really a pity. It's stuff like that I like to see in a box. I think the Turbo Advance being separate, just because Zero gets away with it, doesn't mean Nerf should do it, and Nerf should get away with it. Especially when you're talking about those, okay, here's my big point, is that you got this big drum, and you got those ARs. Okay, here, let me show you what I'm talking about. So on your typical barrel, if this is in open packaging, you got 20 rounds as so. You're going to have a bunch of these, and kids are going to go, and they're going to go, Hey, Mommy, look at this. I can play a song with this. Oh, yeah. So they're going to try to rip them out of there, or they're going to do it. We all know how rough kids are with toys, okay? And this is the other reason I don't like open packaging, because kids are rough with toys. I'm rough with toys. I'm an adult, and I'm just like, you know, meh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, at any rate, um, I would really, you know, they're not going to change it, of course, because Chris Cartea is saying, and who's going to do that? Uh, but, at the same time, it would be a good, useful suggestion that things that are out of one piece, I mean, the judge, that's in a box. Why not have the, 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 the why not have that in the box? The Mastodon is in the box, you know? Why wouldn't the Megalodon not be in a box? I'm serious. They should be in an enclosed box where kids can't play with those little ERs. Not that I'm not going to tear them out anyway, but I'm just saying. The average consumer, yeah. Ought to be really interesting toy fair. Ought to be really interesting to see what they come out with. It ought to be really interesting uh, seeing some more video on the Jupiter and things like that. And of course, the Owl Ranch is going to cover it. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to cover it. I'm going to say what I think of it, everything like that. And we'll see what's good, what's bad, what's great, what sucks, what have you. And we'll see it together. So until next time, this is Chris Cartea saying, don't you go changing, I'll find you. And we all know what that means. Oh, guys, you guys like my, my new loadout? Isn't this cool? Here, check it out. Yeah, let me roll this down, down a bit. Yeah, look at that, man. I'm doing, I'm going to put up the video on this vest. Me showing it off and everything. It's really cool. This is what I was playing um, when you saw me through, play three pistols earlier. This is what I was playing with. Yeah. It's cool because everything is, is magnet holster. It's all on here. It's You could say, oh, Chris, why don't you get a chest rig? Well, the reason is this is skeletal. The, the, the I'm not going to heat up in a chest rig and, you know, 120 degree summer Palmdale heat or Riverside heat or whatever. This is going to stay cool. I can just wear my social D shirt like I am now. And hey, you know, I'm fine. I'm great. I'm dandy. Well, I need some bourbon. God, I need some bourbon. I haven't had a drink since like Friday. So anyway, I'm going to get to drinking. Don't you go changing. We'll find you.